and today we are going to talk about my perfume collection. I asked on my story if I should make a video and what I should do it about, and a lot of people said yes, please do a video because it's positive, and although everything that's happening right now is very important with the pandemic and the protests, I also believe in positivity as well. Kind of escapism, trying to escape the real world and have positivity in your life. So, although it is very important to educate yourself and if you feel like doing that as well, there are links down below to help further your education on what's going on and how you can help. But without further ado, let's just get started on the collection. As you can see, it is color coordinated. If you know me, that does not come as a surprise. I color coordinate my clothes, I color coordinate my apps, I color coordinate my nail polishes, and I color coordinate my perfumes. It is just something that I very much like. As an artist, I like to see visuals and I can look at a perfume and think, that perfume bottle was red, there she is. That's just how I work. If you're wondering about the cabinets, I have had this since I was a baby. So I have no idea where it went, but if you're looking for like a mini cabinet, I would recommend the baby aisle, I guess. <laughs> but that's how long I've had it. And you can tell because there's like little sticker residue because of course kids love to put stickers on everything. And the way that I'm going to show you guys my perfumes is by color, obviously. I think that's the easiest way. Instead of doing it by brand, we're just gonna do it by color. So you're gonna kind of see a wish wash of brands and stuff. So you guys can't really see, but the first color kind of gradient is hot pink or pink. And the first one is Pink Flower by Pink Sugar. I got this a few days ago at TJ Maxx for, I believe, $14.99. And I am in love with it. I don't believe I'm ever going to spray this, to be quite honest with you, because it smells exactly like La Petite Rose Noir by Galon in their intense version and it's the like blue one and I didn't really realize in TJ Maxx but it smells identical to be quite honest with you and it makes sense because La Petite Grove Noir has a cotton candy note and pink sugar is known for their cotton candy notes as well. The next pink one is Ariana Grande's Thank You Next. And the bottle looks almost identical to Chanel's Autantre and like pretty much identical. It's the same pale pink circle packaging. It's even worse when the heart is on it. So you guys are probably used to seeing it with the broken heart. Luckily you can take the rubber plastic thing off and just have a circle. It's very sweet, very childish and youthful. I would say childish and as immature, but it's just a very playful fragrance. At the same time, it's very feminine, so I could definitely wear this at a date night. If you can tell it's kind of new, that's because in the winter time I had the roller bowl only, and I just bought this. Then here's Dolce Cabana's Toile Imperatrice, and it's just this sparkling grapefruit soda fragrance. If you guys want more detail on that, check out my May favorites. These two kind of gradiate into berry red and it kind of helps go from pink to red. They're the same hue but different shades. This one's a little bit lighter, this one's a little bit darker. They're completely different fragrances. This one's fruity, summery, daytime wear. And then this one, Serge Vuitton La Fille de Berlin, is very rosy. It used to give my friend headaches because she's allergic to like rose fragrances. However, if I wear this around anyone who's not allergic to rose fragrances, it's one of their favorite fragrances. Then we have my only bright cherry red fragrance. This is Si Passion by Giorgio Armani. This is so good. It smells soapy, clean, and seductive. Every time I wear it, I get so many compliments. If I only had a fragrance, to be quite honest with you, I believe I would pick this one because it's my most complimented fragrance and I believe it's most complimented because it is me in a bottle and it smells so good. I like C, but C Passion has my heart. 
The two orange and neon orange fragrances are my Juicy Couture, which is Juicy Couture Malibu. As you guys know, I broke the cap off. And then also, Oso oh Orange by Juicy Couture. If you guys want more on these, there's a very detailed video on it. You can find it on my channel. The next fragrance is kind of like an orange yellow color, at least the liquid is, and it's Panama City. This is a fragrance that I made about two summers ago. It smells absolutely divine. I know that there's grapefruit in it, and I know that there's white tea and neroli. It's just really good. It's been a signature fragrance for every summer since. You'll see a trend on my fragrances. I named them after cities and it started all with Panama City. The next fragrance is another one that I have a detailed review on and this is Amaretto et Framboise Poutre. Smells great, smells like pie. It is yellow but it has kind of like an orangey cap so that's why it's next. So this is kind of like a pale beige color and so it's not quite yellow, not quite orange. This is Monte Carlo by me. It's one of my most complex fragrances. I, To be quite honest with you, I think I also made this two summers ago. I do not remember the notes that are in here. It's in the workshops system, but I don't have that. It smells like someone in Monte Carlo. That's why I named it that. It smells like someone watching Polo or someone watching the Grand Prix or someone on a yacht in the Mediterranean. It's just like, it smells like someone that is rich but was born rich. I guess the next one I should talk about is this yellow fragrance. This is from La Tission Parfumé and it's their fragrance. Zing! You can see that this is not just yellow. The girl is wearing cute little red boots and she's riding a tiger. This was inspired by the circus. When it comes to the circus, there's red apple, cotton candy, caramel, tonka bean, toffee, and it's just all these really good fragrances. There should be it's like, it reminds you of hay. I think this was a limited edition bottle, to be quite honest with you. I'm pretty happy that I have this one. I've had this for a very long time. Next is a Chloe Love Story. This is your typical floral, sweet fragrance. If you guys are not really keen on stepping outside of the box, I do recommend this one. It's good to have at least one or two fragrances in your collection that are, for lack of a better word, I guess I like this a little bit better than Chloe something's odd about Chloe that I do like but it's so worn that I'm just over it I also got that through trading so that was very nice of her she traded three of her fragrances for one of mine so very nice so that was yellow with gold and then yellow with silver cats to blue technically this one is yellow and gold but not only could it not fit up there but it has a little gray bow and the gold is kind of hidden from this like tortoise shell looking top but this is my Burberry Eau de Toilette and I love this this is one of the fragrances also that the lady traded for my fragrance one thing that I really like about this bottle is that it has the notes on the side which I think is a really good addition to a bottle. The notes that are in here are lemon flower, peonies, peach flower, freesia, damask roses, and musk. And it sounds like a whole bouquet of roses and you're gonna smell like Valentine's Day in a bouquet, but you don't. It smells like a garden, weeds and all. And that's exactly what I asked her for. I told her I was on the hunt for something like Flora Botanica, but not Flora Botanica, because I already know multiple girls who wear that. So it's an amazing fragrance, but I wanted something different, more different than different. And she sent this my way and I love it. Another yellow fragrance that is not quite silver metallic is Lemon Number no. 1999 by C.O. Bigelow. You can buy this at Bath & Body Works, which is what I did, and it's fairly cheap. I think it's $35 for 3.4 fluid ounces. It smells like lemon candy, but like lemonade, not quite lemon head. It's not too sugary, like there is a sweetness to it. It's not like you're just biting into a lemon and it smells like lemon cleaner or anything. It smells like a perfumed lemon. 
two yellow perfumes with silver caps. Both of them I made. This one doesn't actually have a label on it, but I know that its name is Seoul for Seoul, South Korea. And this one, as Monte Carlo was the fragrance that you would wear because you were born rich, this is the one, like, you got new money. You got sugar baby money. I made it last summer and I was going to the playpen in Chicago quite a bit and I was wearing this and so I kind of associate it with yachts and new money. Then this one is my oldest, so this is about three, three and a half years. This is the most classic fragrance. So as you guys know, I'm a perfumer and create perfumes. I've created this perfume for many, many of my clients. There's a lot of ladies out there wearing my fragrance. Here are all of my Jo Malone fragrances. I have four total. It is Nectarine Blossom and Honey, English Pear and Freesia, Blue Agave and Cocoa, and Wood Sage and Sea Salt. Each one of these are one fluid ounces and they can range from $60 to $70. And then if you wanted 100 milliliters, which I believe is 3.4 fluid ounces, that would be $140. I would honestly not invest your money in this brand. They don't really last that long. They are very unique fragrances, but for how long they last, it's just bare none. So that kind of tells me for how old all of these fragrances were as well. Like the perfumer who created this has been very well compensated. So it's just like, really? $140 or like $70 for this one? Like, come on. Okay, and then my one and only green fragrance. This is Laura Mercier's Eau Garmonde Creme de Pistache. And obviously this is a pistachio cream fragrance. It smells so divine. It's one of my favorite fragrances in the winter, which is crazy to say considering it's barely been touched. And I believe I got this in high school. So if you think about it, like at least four years and that's all I've used. But I use it virtually like at least once a week during the winter time and that's saying a lot considering I have over 30 perfumes. Here is my most aquatic looking fragrance bottle. This is El de Lolita Olympica and I don't believe that they sell this anymore. It smells like the sea. It smells like sea salt and waves and just the beach and not quite Monte Carlo rich, but it smells like you'd be on a boat. So it smells absolutely divine. I love the packaging so much, but they don't sell this anymore. Another fragrance that I have reviewed is Alt Larry Meyer number 75. This is another aquatic fragrance. It smells absolutely divine. You can tell how much I've used it quite a bit. Another Ariana Grande perfume is cloud. As I said before, you can take the rubber thing off and this is how it would look alone. I personally enjoy the blue one with the cloud. The other one just looked very tacky. This one does too, I know, but for some reason I enjoy it. This one has been said it's a dupe for Baccarat Rouge. I could definitely see that. This one's a little bit sweeter, a little bit kinder, I would say, than Baccarat Rouge. When it dries down, it's definitely reminiscent of Baccarat Rouge. However, you can get it for like under $40 on FragranceNet. I got this a shower gel and lotion, but it was like under $50. It's very cheap, while Baccarat Rouge is like over $300. All right, and then we have my only Guerlain perfume, which I hope will change, but this is La Petit Roblin en Pense, as I said before. It smells absolutely divine. It's one of my favorite fragrances right now during the nighttime when I wanna kind of settle down. However, it is very seductive, so if you wanted to wear it while going out or on a date, you definitely can, but I can't right now because of all the quarantining, so I just use it during bedtime. Then we have Bath & Body Works Kaleidoscope. I actually didn't really mean to get my mother. I put it in the Amazon cart and not thinking. I just put it there because I put perfumes in carts and kind of just let it go and, and I just don't think about it. But she bought it when she was buying all the other stuff. The reason why I was curious about it is because it is a dupe for Glossier's You. I have to say, it 100% is. It's very low on longevity. I would say that it 
wears for about an hour or two, while Glossier U kind of wears for a longer time. However, they're the exact same fragrance. And if you're in the mood to spend $30 instead of however much Glossier is selling you for, you can find that on Amazon. And then down here on the third and lowest level are all of my neutral colors. This is Vanille Noir by Yves Rocher, and this is actually a very funny story. I was coming back from a city on a train. I don't remember which one, where I was going, but I was in Rome and we were heading back and I think we were going to get Chinese food. And because of that, we just smelled bad. We smelled like, not bad, but we smelled like the beach and I wanted to smell a little bit better and there was an Yves Rocher kiosk and I really liked it, sprayed it, and I was like, oh dang, that's really good. So I impulsively bought it. It's not my most used fragrance. If you're looking for something that is of better quality, more unique, kind of shifts fragrances throughout the day, this is Olympia by Paco Rabanne. I literally just got this yesterday. I got two fragrances yesterday and then a fragrance today, so. This one is very unique. It has like a ginger, vanilla, jasmine, orange, leather, salt. It has all of that. Once it's at its like last bit, it smells exactly like this one to the T. I immediately knew what this smelled like. However, it just lasts longer. I sprayed this last night and I smelled it this morning. Another brown fragrance is Aesop's. Tacit. This is actually one of my more expensive fragrances. This was 1.7 fluid ounces and it was $120, I believe. However, I do know that it is a very clean made fragrance because it is Aesop and it's a very long lasting, very natural smelling fragrance. I typically wear this during the autumn. However, it is very universal just because of how natural it smells. If you guys want a video on clean fragrances that I own, definitely put that down below. Now, this is not quite a neutral color. It is pink. However, I kept the Gucci Bloom gift box that um, this came with. This is Gucci Bloom, obviously. If you like two rose fragrances and are into designer fragrances, I highly recommend this one. It's very unique in the designer fragrance world. Gucci does that. It is universally liked. So if you're wearing it, anyone will like it. This fragrance, it's technically a gold cap, so it could go up there, but it is clear liquid, so I thought it looked best down here. This is Go Be Lovely by Loom in the fragrance Cactus Verde. You can't find this on Fragrantica or anything like that. They don't have it on the shop anymore. So all I'm gonna tell you is it's, it smells like the desert when it just rained or before it rained. They did a great job with this. This used to be my high school summer scent. Then Mon Jasmine Noir by Bulgari. It smells like a dark floral. I've had this since high school because there was a deal on Groupon and my mom knew I was getting into fragrances so she bought it for me. And it does not smell like a high school fragrance. It's very old, very mature. And none of my friends really liked it except for this one girl who is French. Her mother was French at least. And so she wore fragrances like this. So we kind of like geeked about this fragrance. It's so good. It just smells luxurious. I also got this yesterday with Olympia. This is Zadig and Voltaire's This Is Her Fragrance. And I didn't recognize this when I was online shopping, but the bottle itself is kind of like a cracked piece of stone and it's so cool looking. And I love the packaging. There is a This Is Him fragrance and I'm wondering they are like a cracked stone and then you can put them back together. That would be really cool. So if that's the case, I might have to get the This Is Him just so it looks cool. I don't believe Zadig and Voltaire makes this anymore, so it is getting harder and harder to get your hands on this one. Speaking of hard to get your hands on, this is Elizabeth and James Nirvana Black. Don't know what it is about Elizabeth and James right now. They are getting rid of all of their fragrances on third-party sites like Sephora. It's very hard to find it on Fragrance Net or X or anything like that. However, I just got this literally today, came in the mail today, and it is a 1.7 ounce bottle. It also came with a roll-on and their body oil, which is really cool. I just really enjoy this fragrance a lot. This is a refill, technically. I had two 
roll-ons and then I just ran out. I thought I need to get the full fragrance, especially since it's becoming really hard to find this fragrance. All it is is vanilla, violet, and sandalwood. I could have made this at the perfume workshop that I work at, but I thought, you know, I like the bottle. I like the luxury of it. I love black and gold, as you can see. All right, so that's it for my perfume collection. If you guys liked it, please like down below and if you guys have any requests to have a more in-depth review on any of the 33 fragrances that I own, please let me know and also subscribe so I can see you in the next one. Peace!